when you hired John to help you, why did you hire John? Because I had a critical need for a key player um, with that player being my greatest asset. And if I did not have that closing coordinator, my business was going to flounder. So how are you hiring your closing coordinator before? What was your normal process of bringing someone on and maybe how? I had, that... somebody, I had somebody for 13 years. There was no need. So you had someone for 13 years and this was the person for 13 years that left? Yes. May I ask why they left? Um, our business became too busy. Uh, we went from two buyer's agents to six and the contracts exploded and the person didn't want to keep up with the volume. Um, she couldn't do it anymore. So she decided that she wanted a slower pace and she went to another real estate company that does one quarter of the business. So how many contracts was she processing a month or a week? Uh, she does about 20 contracts a month. Um, yeah. And that's a lot? That was very comfortable, but we were accelerating. So we're this year we're going to 263 contracts. So she's going to probably have to process what? How many more a month? Well, you're going to have to do 30 uh, at least. Okay. About, you know, 25, 30. So she put in her resignation. And you freaked yeah. out because you had no one to be able to handle the closings of all your deals. Right. And then we got a great guy. He was a vet. He was very good at it. He uh, basically was a jurist doctorate. He read the contracts. He was all about being precise. And he was a nice person. So we got along with people. But he just felt that it was too administrative for him. He didn't realize how much detail work it was. And he felt he was getting bogged down. And he wanted to quit. So then we went and we got a buyer's agent. We promoted her from you know the, uh, the daily uh, commission schedule to help us with the uh, administrative part of closing the deal. Thought that would be a good fit, and that was a disaster. So why do you think these two hires were a disaster? The first one was a good hire. However, they didn't feel that the job was going to be a career job that they were going to stay in, and they knew it, so they didn't want to hang around. Um, that, that I couldn't have predicted that one. The second one, had I known about the, the deep personality profiles and slowed down a little bit more, I probably could have prevented that hire. However, like a lot of people, I needed to fill the void. and um, Just kind of put someone in there that will do the work in the meantime, right? Even though they may not oh, be the best fit. And that person could do the work, but not the volume of the work. And so it was sloppy, things got lost, they weren't getting done. And so, but you were using the disc profile for those two hires, though, right? So you know that. Yes. What was, yeah. What, well, was what was the disc of the of the of the doc, of the JD guy, the first guy? Um, he was a C. I he see. was a C guy, and yeah, so he, had, he he was very interesting because he could do the detail and he had a good personality. So what you've been taught that makes a lot of sense. He has he wanted to do the work and he had the disc profile to fit it. And then the second person, what was their disc? Uh, they were I. Um, ID, ID. ID, okay. Yeah, and that's you know, why that person made a good salesperson, but not a good admin. But you put him in there because you just need him there to someone do the work. I had to fill the hole. Sure, okay. And meanwhile, then we knew that the hole was a problem. It was becoming a crater, and we needed to get a good, experienced person. And that's when I called my coach, Bob Corker, and I said, I'm drowning. I need help. If I don't get this position filled... I'm going to fold up. It's just, it's critical. Because, you know, we've got the buyer's agents, and part of the deal is we hand our contracts over to that person so they can get on to closing number next. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? Um, well, I talked to John about our issues. We um, immediately uh, were interviewing. We used a company called Indeed.com. Um, I started to peruse that for anybody that was looking for a job in a certain geographic area. Uh, we did a lot more Craigslist postings, and then we immediately had John do some uh, personality assessments with some folks. Um, when John went through the assessments, I learned very early on that there's something called an economic motivator. Uh, there's some other things that we had not even looked at in our disc personalities. Um, he said some of these people are flight risk. Uh, they're not happy in their current jobs. They won't be a good candidate which, I, again, I didn't know about any of this stuff, but once we went into it together, 60 pages of data on each one of these people before I even get to uh, actually, quite frankly, go through the interview process, it speeds up my time frame from uh, job placement advertising to uh, then creating an interview process. Great. 
So basically when these candidates came in from a professional job search site like Indeed, and there were probably other ways you had that on, we immediately put the, this on this, John had them on this very involved assessment. So John, can you tell us a little more about this assessment that you put these applicants on that identified a few more things than just the disk profile? Sure, it's, it's a multifaceted assessment. It, it's not just a personality profile, which is one of the key three ingredients, but it also measures what's important to the person. In other words, why do they work? What type of things are necessary for them to be fulfilled in their role? And what I know, you know from this assessment is that if those things, your motivators or drivers are not being satisfied or fulfilled, the person is typically not going to stay very long or they're going to retire in place. They're going to basically say, well, I'm unhappy, but it's the only thing that I have, so they're not going to perform at a high level. The third profile actually measures someone's innate or natural talents. So if one is to use just simply a, a disk personality profile or another type of uh, personality profile, you probably have about an 80 or 90% chance that that person is not going to be the right fit because there is so much more involved than merely a person's personality or behavioral style. It's one important dimension, but with other, well, without the other two pieces, um, many people will continue to get burned and make the wrong hire. So what? So when, when Kathy came to you, where did you put the job post, and what was the job post that you put on various sites, or did you put on various sites? What was the, how did you generate leads for the position when she was in such a need? Well, I, actually, in this case, Kathy, uh, Kathy took care of placing the job. Um, I think she used Indeed.com, uh, mm -hmm. which is one of multiple sites. Um, that's certainly a good one to use. Um, something that I could also recommend to others is to use a, a job aggregator like gethired.com or ziprecruiter.com because it, it takes it out to about 30 or more sites. So it, it casts the largest net, so to speak, and gives you the most visibility you know, with all the different other job sites out there. So, Kathy, what was in the ad? What did you put up there for a transaction coordinator that got this great hire for you, or at least the initial inquiry before you assess them? What did you say? Um, I don't know, I probably have it in a file somewhere, but the transaction coordinator is um, highly detailed, likes people, um, can deal with multiple personality profiles, um, is available uh, for a quick response. I, I, we, we were quite lengthy and almost, you know, discourage people from, you know, getting into this because it, it requires a lot of um, multitask, even though we're not supposed to multitask, but a lot of switching around. Sure. Uh, and uh, did it on Craigslist. And what we do is we have a website, uh, kathytoth.com forward slash job underscore opportunities. And then at homesearchannarbor.com, we have career underscore opportunities. On those websites are the job descriptions. So at some point, we may have a job description that's active for a buyer's agent. Once it's filled, we go filled. So when we are doing the ads, we send them to that particular page and then there's John's profile, there's a standard DISC test, and then there is the application that they need to fill out. Once they follow the directions, fill out the application, do two personality profile tests, then then it gets emailed to me. Only then do I look at all that and then I decide if I'm going to set up an interview. So it is that funnel that uh, Jay Kinder uses as well. So once they make it through the hoops, then I'll be able to sit down because again, I can spend weeks interviewing people going to the recruit select and they're not even going to make it through the end hoop. So I, Kathy, I how, much, how much time would it take for me to apply for a job with you then with all the hoops that I got to go through? Uh, well, you could do it in one day. All you have to do is follow directions, fill out the profiles and send me your application um, and I, I need to look at it. I think the big thing that John offers is the DISC, the traditional one, we had a, a, a buyer's agent, John, it was, um, his name was Steve, if you remember, the one profile told me he was a D, but John's profile actually turned out that he was a C. He was, a, he was somebody who was always starting to get started, and no matter what, he needed more information. And while he was a great person to be in a corporate world, he was not ever going to be a phenomenal salesperson, and he ended up leaving. He, we trained him. We spent a lot of time with him. This was before John got involved, and um, it was not a good fit. But again, it's his assessment that is, I'll call it three-dimensional. And when John talks about, you know, the 
the qualities of the person. So let me give you the, the thing about Donna. Donna has a high motivator about and, and Kathy, who's Donna? This is your new transaction coordinator? Donna is our transaction coordinator, and she's going to help us close 263 deals this year. And she's going to handle transactions of all of them. All huh? those deals. She's going to she's going to handle the file for all those deals on her own. That's right. Which is and great. so okay. Well, well, watch this. She was an underwriter for 25 years. That's great. And she's nice. But here's what John said before we we nailed the appointment. He says family is extremely important to Donna. So how you can give the trade off is she was making six figures at her other career. And I'm not paying six figures. Now, I'm in an employment market. Michigan is still depressed, so I was able to get her for a less salary. But what I was able to offer her was more important to her. And guess what? Flexibility of time. If you need to go home at 4.30 because the kid's got a, you know, a soccer game or something like that, or you've got it today, she's taking her mom to a doctor's appointment. I mean, John, is there anything that you can share that has made this hire successful of what you're doing differently with her than what she was doing previously to hire someone on the admin side? Sure. Um, again, I think, Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're only using the disk profile as a single entity, and people are just so so much more com complex than just a one-dimensional tool. So while the disk has value, the richness of the other two tools is what really gives us an, a cr an incredible amount of insight to know with it a, a, a minimum of a 90% level of accuracy. Scientifically now, it's time-tested and proven, statistically validated, so you have that behind you to give you full confidence that can this person actually not just do the job, but can they actually thrive in the role? Will they be fulfilled in what they're doing? And are they going to be somebody that's good, not just in the short term, but as Kathy went through, you know, she told me when we first started uh, working together that she was literally losing sleep at night. You think about her volume tripling or her sales staff tripling and the additional strain that that's going to put on that transaction coordinator. However, if that one person was only used to kind of like a moderate amount of volume or activity level and she's not accustomed to or, or not simply not willing to be able to handle larger volume, that's going to have be a huge problem. So what's great is not only does it give us the highest level of accuracy on whether the person is a great person for the job, and really you don't want to settle for anything less, but what was really rewarding for me and why I get so much intrinsic um, fulfillment from doing this is because three weeks into the job, Donna actually mentioned, she said, of all the jobs that I've had in my career, she said, this is the best fit for my natural ability and who I am as a person of any job that I've ever had up to this point. So, folks, when you have that kind of a comment after three weeks, just imagine the productivity, just imagine the level of engagement, just imagine the level of performance that's going to be there as opposed to settling and, and throwing the dice if you're just using you know one personality profile tool or maybe just relying on the resume in an interview. Well now that that person's hired Kathy, you know, John's working with Donna more extensively after the actual hire and you said that was a very important part of what John's doing. Can you tell me more about the value there and what that is? Right. Well, so also before the hire, Bob Corcoran interviewed the person as well, and it gives me a, a stamp. John helped with that process, but also after the person was uh, onboarding, and so that was three weeks, but also it was um, three months after, and so that was another a little assessment. Hey, Donna, how you doing? It wasn't just me sitting down and having selective hearing. It was this independent person that really Donna doesn't know very well, and that's John. And John's able to ask some very tough questions that, um, you know, she she was uh, asked to open up and be very honest, and if there was any information that could be shared. And then, of course, John um, came back to me and said this and this and this. Now, uh, he had also, uh, in the previous person, had interviewed her because we'd done a personality profile assessment, and that person had some concerns, and they were shared with John. And, and again, he let me know what they were so that if there was a way to make a correction and uh, stay on task, we could. So part of that was that post-interview from a third party, neutral party, that was very important to me. Um, John has a very good way with people, 
uh, to get out their natural abilities. And what John was actually saying is the stripes of a zebra don't change. Identifying that this is a zebra and she's comfortable in a zebra herd, that was brilliant because she's thriving. She likes what she's doing. She feels at home and is comfortable. Um, and, and knowing, like what he said, 90% accuracy that this is going to be a good fit, this will be successful. I, I just couldn't go through a third person anymore. That, uh, that would drive our team crazy. So that's one of the things is that knowing that, oh, this assessment is very, very powerful. So the ongoing work that John's doing, tell me more about that. Um, also, John has interviewed Eric Rio, who also was hired just before Donna, uh, along with an assessment uh, after hire, and then I think, you know, at the same time that you talked to Donna. Um, and that was, again, I said to Eric, how did that call, call go? Is there anything that you picked up from John that we should discuss? Or, you know, very candid, nope, I'm happy, and, and John got the same assessment from him that, yep, he's thriving in the job. and, and Simple question is on a, a scale of a one to ten, how how happy are you? And he was an eight or nine, and that's great. I mean, that's perfect. And he's in a lot of training and, and personal development. Um, we also introduced the whole team to John by flying John out, so we could all look at how we interact with our disc personality profiles, not only for our team members but also for our clients. And we, we figured out a couple of great questions when we do our intake forms on the personality profiles for our clients. If I could just share those now. Sure. Is that okay? Absolutely. So when you're looking at your, your clients, the questions were, how would your significant other or your best friend describe you? Direct and to the point, natural born salesperson and life of the party, warm, sincere, sensitive, and friendly, or cautious and accurate. Now it's really cool when they answer that question for the him and the her, we can then say, hey, Donna, the buyer male, he's a D, and the female buyer, she's a C, and, and because Donna's integrated in the whole process as well, so is our whole team, Donna has a better chance of, of making a connection with these people and understanding and relating to what's important to them and how she communicates with them. Great. In our, in our copy room, we have everybody's DISC, their natural and their adaptive behavior. And when John does this personality test, if the stripes are the same, their natural and their adaptive are similar. If their natural behavior is very different from their adaptive, then their lifestyle at work is not suited to them. Something's wrong. So we wanted to look at, hey, a very close assessment from their real personality profile, how they are in the workplace. That was an, another key leading, learning indicator for us, right, John? Absolutely. For those of you listening, I want to I want to emphasize how brilliant this is that Kathy has put this together, literally, because the best salespeople do this innately or intuitively. In other words, they're able to identify and recognize very quickly the style of the buyer, which dictates not only how a person thinks and why they make the decisions that they do, but also how they want to consume information, how they want you to communicate with them. And by doing so, you develop the highest and, and level of trust and rapport in the quickest fashion. So we also identified some other questions like the majority of the buyers out there are what I would call risk averse. They like the status quo. They're very steady. So as a result, we came up with some additional questions such as, in your, in your current home, what are the top three things that you value the most that you want to see or want to have replicated in your new home? Because people with this type of personality style do not like a whole lot of change. In fact, they like things that are predictable and things that make them comfortable are things that they're very familiar with. So, uh, you know, you've heard it said that the secret to sales is asking the right questions, the best questions. So not only are these great questions, but it elicits information that makes the person feel like, hey, this person truly understands me. They, they, they know who I am. They value who I am as a person. They understand what's important to me. One other thing I'll mention, Frank, if it's okay, that, that we did with her team, and what I like to do with every team that I work with, is I created a one-page executive summary 
or a strength, what I call a strength plan for every single member of her team. And what it really, now think about it. This tool that I use is 69 pages in length. It's just going to become shelfware and never going to be used again unless we make it practical and easy to use. So what I do is I take 69 pages of data, I boil it down into one page of the most relevant, most critical information. That information includes how do you best communicate with this person, how do you create the ideal work environment for this person, and then most important of all, what are their three strongest innate talents? And are there any areas of potential or any blind spots that they're not aware of that they can capitalize on? So Kathy has a cheat sheet, a one-page summary for every person on her staff, which tells her all of this information. And it's very, very powerful, especially for a new hire. So, you know, in the first 90 days, you basically are holding your breath, saying your prayers and taking your vitamins and hope that the person that showed up in the interview is going to be the person you know, that basically comes to work every day. Mm -hmm. As far as the employee is concerned, they're concerned about um, who, who is this person that, that's now hired me? Do I like them? Do I trust them? And did I make a good decision? Well, what this does by creating these strength plans, and incidentally, Kathy shares the details of hers as well with the rest of the team, it helps them to accelerate or jumpstart those relationships. Great. Well, Kathy, one last question for you. You still there? Are you moving your computer around? Yeah, this is our little break room, and we've got everybody's DISC on the wall. That's great. Along with their vision boards. <laughs> That's great. That's taken it to the next level, you know, because everybody can see their peers' uh, profiles. It's front of mind. It's just it's a it's something that's just great. It's taking it to the next level. It's reinforcing the use of the tool. So, Kathy, one last question. What would you say is the biggest benefit of working with John? Well, what it is is we can expedite the process, speed the process along from finding out if the people are worthy to receive an interview, and then when we interview, uh, John can help us with the assessment and make an offer to somebody that's going to stick. So from the time that you had to hire John to getting Donna in a role, how much time did that take? You found a transaction. You, tr you found a transaction quote error in how much time? It was about 10 days. And how much time did that take you of that process? I would say three hours. And how much would that normally have taken you if you didn't have John? Well, if you go through the Recruit Select, any Keller Williams agents know, it's brutal. It's several weeks taking her weeks. And would you say Donna is how far into her job now? Oh, uh, four, five, well, December, November, December, January, February, March, April. Um, she's almost six months. So she's six months in. And how's she doing? What would you, how, what would you give her on her job performance? She's a 10. Her name is God. <laughs> she's a 10. Her name is God. Well, that's great. Well, John, how does someone get a hold of you if they want your help? Uh, the best way is my, is my cell phone which is 336-210-0327. Again, it's 336-210-0327 or via email. It's just my first name, John, J-O-H-N, the letter A. My last name is Pike, P-Y-K-E, at gmail.com. Great. Well, Kathy, thanks a lot for the, uh, the great feedback today. And, John, always a pleasure to have you on the interviews. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, guys. Cheers All for right. me, Edgar.